across it for days on Jane, can you hear me? Hello, yes, Mark. Hi, how are you? Good, good, good. I was worried. I was actually setting my cell phone up just now. It's like, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. And this, you're right. The landline is so much better, especially with um, international calls. So I'm glad that we stuck with it. I'm going to pop you straight through, okay? Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. You know the levels that the, you see the guys standing on the side of the road with their, you know, the, t the laser levels? It yeah. was perfectly flat without the drop of the curvature of the earth. Yeah, but obviously the distance wasn't far enough. Now, you, you mentioned a few minutes ago it was eight miles, or what's it? Eight, eight inches. inches per mile. That's Squared. to me like an awful lot. I'm, yeah. Well, okay, I'm going to go to Mark Sargent anyway in Colorado. Steve, thank you for joining us Thanks and giving us your theory on us. Let me go to Mark Sargent. Mark, hi, how are you? I'm, I'm very well. And by the way, I've been listening to the whole show. Steve, your, your caller is absolutely spot on. Steve, if you're listening, you were right five years ago. You're right now. Um, it's it again. But he's, he's, no, he's not a flat earther. Mark. I know, he's no, I get it, I get it. Know. I I hear that a lot, which is yeah. he's not a flat earther, but he has questions. Um, and the yeah. the the correction, real quick, it's eight inches per mile squared, so it's eight inches per mile per mile. So ten miles would be ten times ten, which is a hundred times eight inches. So eight hundred inches, and it just gets worse and worse until like at fifty miles, it's about seventeen hundred feet. There you go. Okay, let me just do a quick intro for you, who for people who don't know you, because. Oh, right. You jumped right in. Sorry. <laughs> so I, I'm going to... know that's okay. No, no, we, we can do things the other way around. It doesn't okay. really matter. Okay. I, I, I had said to Jane, my producer, on Monday, she kept saying to me, like, who would you like to talk to? I said, I'd love to talk to a flat earther. And she said, <laughs> yes. And she delivered, of course. So I am intrigued to be talking to what the self-described flat earth recruiter. Yeah. And for people who don't know, that's people who believe the earth is flat. Yeah. Uh, so I am thrilled to welcome you to the show, Mark. From uh, where well, you're going, you grew up in Whidbey Island, Washington. Yes. And you started your career playing computer games uh, professionally. Yep. That, that, that's something I'd love to do. I love. I love. I'm playing Spider-Man on the PlayStation Five nice. at the moment. Love it. Nice. Anyway, uh, so I would love to do that professionally. So, what first of all got you into the idea? Because everybody, from the day we start school, and we're shown, you know, a little atlas or a globe or whatever it is, right. we're all told. It's round. Right. There's no question about it. Right. It's round. Right. So what made you question that? Oh, uh, conspiracy boredom, more or less. Uh, I never got married or had kids for whatever reason, and so I had tons of free time on my hands. Looked into it just about every conspiracy you could think of, ran out, and ran out of conspiracies. Like, well, okay, what haven't I hit? What's on my bucket list? Well, I could look at Flat Earth. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And spent nine months. It was supposed to only take a weekend. And nine months later, I'm like, ah, oh, crap, what do I do? So I made a series of videos, put them so out. You went down the rabbit hole is what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. You went yeah. down the rabbit hole. Yeah, went down the rabbit hole. Time. Could okay. not climb out. And so then I made a series of videos called uh, the Flat Earth Clues, put them out on the Internet. Because I was like, well, the Internet as a, as a hive mind is very intelligent. People are dumb, but the hive mind's intelligent. And uh, they came back was like, oh, no, no, it's not that dumb. And here's why. And uh, people were contacting me from all, all different professions and, and different parts of the world. And here we are nine years later with three books, a documentary, and I don't know, I mean, 1,600 videos. It's been crazy. So, yeah, that's how I got into it. I, I, you, know, you know what astonishes me? The amount that thousands, oh, sorry. And what astonishes me is that thousands of people around the world uh, who believe uh, yeah, I see what you did there. Who believe? Sorry, the thousands. Yeah, the thousands of people around the world who yeah. believe that the Earth is flat. Yeah. Or you know, uh, that blows my mind. Yeah. Oh no, it's it's not thousands. It's millions. We've got we've got. I mean, we've done we've done conferences in before the pandemic. I did conferences in what eight countries? It was crazy. In fact, there's um. Mm. In fact, there's two meetups happening in your neck of the woods uh, this weekend and next weekend. One's in uh, Bournemouth, if you know where that is. And uh, the others in the UK, in, the United Kingdom. Yeah, and you in UK, yeah, and the other ones in. Mark, whatever you, whatever you do, don't confuse Ireland with the UK. Get <laughs> angry. I know, I know. I was going to do one of those jokes because I know people say Americans are absolutely dumb, but I was going to say, ah, Ireland, Scotland. What's the difference, right? But that's the... <laughs> yeah, what, what's the difference? What's the, the difference? Doesn't, doesn't the king look after us? <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, but yeah, there's we well, got. Okay, let, let's look at the obvious. Okay, yeah, the obvious yeah. things yeah. here. Okay. The obvious thing is, you know, ships sail around the world and they don't fall off the edge. Right. Explain to me why. Sure. If the Earth is flat. Okay. Uh, ships sail around the world, sure. Uh, but the same token, uh, if the world was flat and you put your finger on it and you drew a circle around it, you know, and you came back to the same point you started, technically you circumnavigated the dinner plate. 
Does that make the dinner plate a globe or a sphere or a ball? By the way, we never use the word round because round can also be two-dimensional, like a dinner plate and stuff like that. Well, uh, spherical, spherical, yeah. Yes, yeah. spherical. Uh, but but no, I mean, again, the compass works absolutely the same on a, on a flat Earth. And by the way, why don't you fall off the edge? Well, we're not talking about a, a dinner plate in the middle of space. In fact, why is there space at all? Space is just an illusion. It's just images on a ceiling. You're living in a planetarium, uh, a soundstage, a big building. You know, Shakespeare said, "All the world's a stage," and that's where you are. So so the water well, can't the water can't photograph? fall off anywhere because you're basically in a giant lake. I mean, you might as well be in a snow globe sitting on somebody's desk. Okay, but if it's flat, yeah. there has to be an edge. Sure. Yeah. 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 The edge would so, be. So, okay. so where is so, so where is the edge? Oh, perfect. Uh, the the edge would be Antarctica. Every other continent on the on the flat Earth model, and I'm staring at one right now, and it's not going to do any good for radio. Uh, would be look the same except for Antarctica. Antarctica isn't this snowy continent that looks like uh, Australia in winter, uh, which wouldn't actually Australia doesn't snow in winter, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it would be spread no. around or, along the uh, entire outside. Antarctica is much bigger than uh, than we think it is. And by the way, uh, Steve's uh, question about the Antarctic Treaty is absolutely the true. Antarctic Treaty, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It was well, a was, sa- that, was that was that treaty not originally brought in to stop people exp- or to stop uh, the military experimenting with atomic weapons, etc. Et no, nah, that, that the purpose. Allegedly. No, no, no. The Antarctic Treaty was basically stopped to keep the the general public and and other countries from doing anything in Antarctica. By the way, it's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties. It was established in 1959, mm-hmm. right after we basically figured us and the Soviet Union figured out what this place was. And they basically wrote in. They said, "Yeah, no corporation from any country can do business in Antarctica, ever." For the and it's not even up for review until 2040. And you say, well, 2040 isn't that long from now. Yeah, but it was in 1959. And again, name me another treaty so, that's so that. So what would I see if I went? What's so secret about Antarctica? So what would I see if I went there? Would I be able to walk to the edge and look over into space or something? Uh, no, 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 no. But it will imagine if you did have access to Antarctica. First off, they're not going to because of the treaty. You're not going to be able to allow. You're not going to be able to roam around. The whole point was is that oil and gas companies were never going to be able to go there with planes and helicopters and go off course. But eventually, you would find not necessarily the the edge of space, but probably the outer the outer barrier, the outer wall. Again, think of it like a snow globe. Uh, eventually you would run into the, you know, the wall, whatever it is. And that's what I think they found in, uh, during Operation Deep Freeze in 1955-1956. And in relation to, say, shadows yeah. and the sun's location, right. if the Earth is flat, how come the sun is located in different places at different times of the day and the shadows are longer and shorter at different times of the day? As we, as the sun, or we revolve. I mean, how come that's right. happening? Right, right, Earth right. Is indeed flat and it's not moving. Right, right. The two, two parts of it, and, and you'll have to tell me if you're picking some of this up from the from your chat room, which is the the sticks and shadows argument. Real quick for anyone that's asking that in chat room works absolutely perfectly on a flat Earth. But what we're saying is, is the sun and the moon. Let, let's simplify it because I know we don't have a lot of time. The sun and the moon are very, very small and very, very close and probably inside this place, inside the snow globe. So the sun's not hundreds of thousands of miles wide. It's only 50 miles wide, give or take. And so is the moon. They're just revolving around us like a a mobile above a child's crib. And because they are so unbelievably tiny, that's how you can get time zones. Because some people will say, well, how it's drawn when you look it up on the Internet. Wouldn't it be light everywhere or dark everywhere? It's like, no, the sun is, is so small that we can't even draw it correctly in our own maps because if we drew it to, to what we say it is, you wouldn't even see it. Mm. That kind of helped. Okay. Kinda. I, I, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at photographs here, right. you know. From space? Unless you're going to tell me, yeah, yeah. Uh, from NASA. Oh, and, God. And unless you're going to tell me they're CGI oh, or yeah. they're, they're artist drawn or, I mean, they look real to me. And, and I watched that guy only recently left out of a you know uh whatever it was you know the longest free fall oh yeah the red the red bull jump yeah yeah felix Baumgartner. yeah 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 yeah. and looking down we could see the camera that was live i saw a spherical earth you know i mean it's balmy to even think it's flat well no 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 because remember fisheye lens if you look out a hotel and I'm, i'm sure you've stayed in a hotel when you look out that uh peephole lens in your hotel your hotel hallway is absolutely not curved but it shows you a curve same lens they use in in photography but but it's not a fisheye it's not a fisheye lens okay wide wide angle wide angle lens it's same same thing 
But but they used a wide angle lens on the Felix Bumgarner jump, I and mean, he was only 120,000 feet up. In fact, Neil Tyson, no offense to Brian Cox, the world's second most famous media scientist, but Neil Tyson goes, you know, he's the one from America. Uh, and he comes on and he says, no, the, the the Red Bull jump was absolutely fraudulent. He goes, that was not the edge of space. Remember, he's an absolutely an anti-flat earther. But he thought that it was scientifically dishonest for um, uh, Red Bull to do that. And I get it. I talked to some of the producers that work for Red Bull. And I go, why did you run that shot? It was a wide angle lens. They go, well, it was a good shot, though, wasn't it? It was more dramatic when you. you well, know, it was a good shot. Well, it was, was a good shot. shot. I get it. You know, Mark, Mark, Mark Twain said well, never. Okay, but other pictures have been taken by. Other pictures have been taken by, you know, NASA. Space shuttle, uh, you know, the, the Challenger and all those oh, other God. space shuttles that went up in yeah. space. Um, and, uh, and we've seen those photographs sure. of this beautiful, you know, blue spot in the sky right. called planet Earth. Right. And, and, and it's kind of hard for me to, to think, Mark, that there's any level of sanity in thinking otherwise. Well, let me, let me throw it at, at you this way. When NASA was formed in 1958, and I'll make this brief. We were trying to be, remember, this was after the war. We were trying to put a, a big stamp, put, put a big flag in the ground. The Americans wanted to be the greatest show on earth. The easiest way to become a legend is tell an impossible story. So we came up with something even the Roman Empire didn't do. We told everyone the Americans went to the moon. And so we shot it in a, in a mm -hmm. whatever, Air Force basement. We put it on television. And I'm amazed, by the way. I've, I've been to Dublin. I've been to all sorts of different countries. And I asked them, I go, why do you think? I go, it's required over here in America. It's like, it's, we, have to, we have to believe it for national pride. Why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? And everyone says the same thing. Well, it was on television. And it's not you know, like your news would ever lie about something like that. And it's like, you mean they wouldn't lie about well, something? But those, but those theories, I mean, and don't get me wrong, I have a huge interest in, in you know, the, the, the fake moon landing theory. Sure. I, don't, I think it's extraordinary. I watch all the documentaries and everything else. But there's also other documentaries that debunk the documentaries. Oh, that debunk come on, all man. The other stuff, that debunk the flag flying business, and they debunk the shadows, and they debunk the fact there's no stars in the sky. And I, okay. They debunk all the okay. theories. You, you remember what, what happened? I mean? You know what happened two days ago? You know, we delayed the, uh, you know, because the Americans have never been back. In fact, no one's set foot on the moon since 1972, and only the Americans did it. And we just kicked the can down what the road. Only because there was no purpose to it. Oh, well, well, come, on, come on. Come on. Why? Why? Money, there was no purpose. Why? Why, why, we, why we do it? In the, to go to the moon to bring we, back a few rocks. We've, we've said ever since the late 70s, every president's like, oh, no, we're going back. We're going back. And I have seen this can kick down the road to where two days ago, it's like, okay, uh, we postponed it again until 2026. It's like 50 years we've been kicking this can down the road and nobody seems to notice. And by the way, even if the Americans... Well, yeah, but they took the money away from space exploration because it was a waste of money. Uh, because, I mean, particularly when it came to going to the moon, what was the point of continuing the uh, Apollo missions going to the moon to bring back bags of rocks? No well, point. don't, don't forget... Don't, for, dollars. don't forget, and I, I don't... I, I forgot how old you were. But you remember there was a space race, right? Remember, <laughs> it, was, it was us and the Soviet Union. The space race, and yeah. then all of a sudden, we get there, right? And then we go multiple times and Russia just quits... No, nah, that's not how a space race works. It was like they would have put a small base, we would have put a bigger base, and then finally Time Magazine would have wrote, has the Cold War well, reached the, the moon? Didn't the Chinese, who, who aren't really the great friends with the Americans, didn't the Chinese say themselves, they admitted they monitored um, the Apollo mission. Oh, and yeah, they yeah. monitored it landing on the moon. Right, yeah, right, right. The the, the, the Chi no, I think it was Australia, but the Chinese, no, I don't think the Chinese had the tech back then. But, but the Chinese, by the way, who built a, supposedly their entire ISS space station, and supposedly they did it in 18 months, and there's absolutely zero footage of them putting that thing together. Not a frame. It's like, come on. It's like with the people. Elon Musk wants to go to the moon. Oh, we? don't Elon, get Elon me. Don't get me started about Elon Musk. He is our. Don't, don't he, tell me he's in on it as well. He is he, our. He is our good. South African <laughs> puppet. That guy. Oh my God, that guy is so <laughs> terrible. Nothing he ever says comes true. And yes, he, he is absolutely works for NASA. SpaceX is just an offshoot of NASA in case something goes wrong. And the Artemis program has just been blowing up rockets right and left. Our, Artemis 1 was a fireworks show. So no, Elon Musk. Oh, oh my God, how dare you bring him up? I I like it. I like it. I, I know. I, oh so, so, so many Mark. people over here do it. It's like, look, he is not freaking Tony Stark. Stop making him out like he is. He didn't. He didn't found SpaceX. Okay, I, he didn't found Tesla. He was been. He's been backed by our government the entire way. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. It's your show. <laughs> okay. Somebody just texted and says, "Good evening, Niall." Uh, while I don't believe the Earth is flat, anyone who thinks that things are as simple as that, um, uh, what they know, uh, what reality is. Okay. I suggest 
If they are not aware of the double slit experiment, they should check it out online. It's too complicated to explain in text, but so mind-blowing, a real wake-up call to the fact that what we perceive as reality is anything but. Do you, are you aware of the... I'm oh, aware yeah, of no, I could, I, could give you a, I could give you a class lecture on the double slit experiment, um, but I, I'll, I'll make it really short. The double slit experiment basically says that whatever we're looking at is not being rendered graphically like it should be meaning in 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 games when you're playing games whatever's behind you isn't being rendered you because you're not looking at it it's it's the first person oh, observer I've seen this is the one where you okay this is the one where there's a piece of card hanging down with two slits and you shine yeah. a light at it yeah in, yeah, I've seen, I've seen in, in the computer world, it's called flashlight graphics. But the problem is, and again, this was talked about in a, a 1998 movie called The 13th Floor, which was absolutely genius, uh, which is, why is that happening here? The double slit experiment happens in computer games all the time because that's what we design them to do. Why is it happening here now we, in our world? We, basically, what he's saying is, is that uh, this world, again, if it's flat and it's enclosed, then it's probably virtual. Uh, the only difference is we're in it, so we can't break out of it. But yeah, virtual reality. Oh yeah, I'm huge into that. But most people don't get it. Remember okay, the, so, so get, go ahead. Okay, so so get, getting back to the photographs, and again, I'm looking at a picture of from flat Earth people, yeah. and I see what you're saying the Earth looks like, and I'm also looking at another picture from NASA, yeah, and um, that was taken from space shuttles or from satellites or whatever right. it happens to be. Right. I, I, I'm kind of going with, with their version. That's okay. I, I don't know what your version is sitting on. No, no, I, 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 I got so, you. So I got you. Your, I, version looks like, your version looks like it's somebody who drew it. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we had yeah. to draw it. I mean, we, you can't, there is no footage from space. In fact, it's one of my proofs that I want to, to, ha to have done for people. It's like, because I've said, look, put me in a SpaceX rocket if you want to, but send any rocket up with a camera, I don't care if it's 4K or not, pointing down until the Earth forms into the globe. It's never happened in the history of space travel, ever. That footage does not exist. It's like, statistically speaking, that should have happened by now, and it hasn't. I mean, come on, we've been doing this since the 50s, and there is no footage of the Earth turning into a globe. And, don't, and I, I know you're probably going to say, what about the Tesla Roadster in space? It's like, come on. It's like, it was like, they just like, okay, we're going to show booster, booster, and then cut to car. It was brilliant editing. I'll, I'll give them that. But NASA is pure theater, absolutely pure theater. And yeah, it is. I, I understand the point you're making, right? And what I'm going to say is, I, I, I don't for a minute want people to think that I believe that they Oh, are I know you don't. But it's okay. I understand. I don't know. That. <laughs> but I, but okay. So I, I think it's, I think it's wonderful to listen to people talking about it because sure. I question everything. I'm a critical thinker. Okay. Yeah. And I love conspiracy theories. I might not believe them, but I just love them. And I love going down those rabbit holes as well. And I know there's a lot of questions, yeah. you know, about things that you kind of go, well, yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. But the earth is still round. <laughs> okay. Do, do you doubt yourself? Do you actually doubt yourself? I did for the first six months. I mean, this nobody nobody gets into flat Earth thinking it's a great idea. I hated it. Everybody hates it. The the T-shirt literally reads, "I became a flat Earther because I tried to debunk it." And so for the first six months, I was like, "Oh God, this is going to backfire on me," because I put all my contact information. And then after six months, when all these subject matter experts started coming at me, military people and pilots and air traffic controllers, it's like, "Dude, it's not that crazy." And here's why. I'm like. Holy smokes, this is, in, in, this is what everyone has that weird aha moment. You know, if you spend enough time on it, uh, it, it when you snap around, again, we have a 99% retention rate. Once we get, once you're in, mm -hmm. it, I know it sounds cliche, or, you know, once you're flat, you know, you never go back, but it's true. We, we have a higher retention rate than organized yeah. religion. No offense to religious people out there. Okay, but, but if there was no buildings in between and no mountains in between, right. uh, the human eye is a wonderful piece of equipment, by the way. It's better right. than most cameras. Right. It'd probably be about 10 million megapixels. Right. <coughs> you would be able to see a city 100, or you would be able to see parts of a city 100 miles away. Would you lose You can, and, and, and you can. The, the earth. You absolutely can. The, the, what's changed? You were talking about, the, were talking about the, pho the photograph taken from Mount Baldy. This is the one yeah, famous not, a, not, a, not necessarily even mountains. We've done stuff from, uh, from sea level. The only difference is, okay, two things real quick. Uh, what's changed is HD technology. 30 years ago, you know, when HD cameras were absolute crap, you couldn't, you couldn't zoom in and, and see things. But now you can take a $500 off-the-shelf ca camera and zoom in and see boats off in the horizon that were gone. And then you can let them go away again and zoom in. As long as the water is perfectly calm, you could see the bottom of the boats. 
Uh, but the only distance, so the, real quick, the follow-up question is, uh, why can't you see Japan from California? Why can't you see Europe from New York? Why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? And that is because the atmosphere has a thickness. You know, we're, we're breathing in basically a thin version of water. In fact, it's 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. Over time, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker to where eventually you just can't see through it. And that's one of the brilliance of the design of this place is uh, you're, you can only see so far. Now, if it was a vacuum, absolutely could. You'd be able to see very, very, very far. And do, do people look at you different? Yeah. <laughs> when they see you with a flat iron t-shirt, do they look at you like, hey? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, did. they do. I mean, alert. I mean, do they, they do? Do they look at you different? Well, back in 2015, yeah, it was tough. It was really tough. And again, no offense to Steve. There's so many people, you know, I, I've heard this so many times. It's one of the, the clips inside the Behind the Curve documentary, which is, I've heard it. I'm not a flat earther, but there's some things about it I think should be looked into. Uh, to, but now, you know, I've been, it's coming up on nine years since the clues. And uh, yeah, people, people don't give me that hard a time. I'm, I'm looking out the window. I'm looking out the window and I see the North Star, okay? Yeah. And when I look out the window, and in a half an hour's time, yeah. it'll have moved. Yeah. Because obviously we're moving. Or, or the, well, that's, the, that's the big that. question. No, we, okay, yeah. The, the general glo globalists or flat or general people will say that uh, the earth is the normal. Normal, and the normal people. The normal, the normal people, people, yes. <laughs> and, and, but we'll say that the sky is moving. No different than a planetarium. You know, it's, yeah, I mean, and, and by the way, you could go into Google. You want to look up some fun stuff, type in ancient cosmologies and then click on images. Every culture drew the same thing back a thousand years ago, which is they drew a snow globe because that's what they saw. And only later it's like, oh, no, no, the stars aren't moving. We're moving. And it's like, okay, all right, unless they're not. And, and again, I get it. I understand why you would hide something like this. It's, it's, it's pretty scary. You know, one of your questions might be, why, why would the Americans keep it a secret? It's like, well, because by the time they figured it out, civilization was already built. Everything was already in place. It was almost 1960. Everything was pretty much the way they wanted it. You don't want to upend education and economics and definitely not religion. I mean, you're giving, you know, the five major houses. Yeah, but, but I... Go ahead. But, but, but I, I mean, when, when I've been on a plane at 25,000 feet heading to the United States or wherever it happens to be going across the Atlantic, right. and you look out the window, right. and on one side you'll see the nighttime, and on one side you see the dark, right. if, if you're heading home in the middle of the night. Right. And, and you see this beautiful sun on one side, the moon on the other, right. and you can see the curvature of the Earth. Can you? Am I delusional? Am I seeing things? Is that what you're telling yeah, me? Yeah, no, it's, it's very Orwellian in that, um, you know, the five lights, four lights thing, which is it's not that you see the curve. You want to see the curve. You've been told the curve is there so many times. That you see the curve again. No, I, I see it, Mark. I've said it. I, 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 I know. I know you said you've said it, but I, I will quote Neil deGrasse Tyson where he says, look, he goes at 120,000 feet. You cannot see the curvature. So is the most famous scientist in the world wrong? And I put this to, you know, science kids and, and they like start scratching their heads. I go, because he's your guy. And what about what about the pilots on that plane? If, if you're telling me that, you know, the earth is like a dinner place. Yeah. And, you know, and if we're, you know, heading on a long distance journey. Obviously, the, the boat or the plane has to kind of go around slightly in a circle, right. okay, by your theory. Surely the pilot of the plane is aware of that because he has to change the degrees constantly to keep turning to go around this dinner plate that you're talking about. But he doesn't. He just goes straight. Well, okay. First off, the distances are so vast that the pilots wouldn't, wouldn't notice much of the correction anyway. Also, the pilots don't make the corrections themselves. The GPS system does it for them. And don't forget that the GPS system is, coincidentally enough, is a United States Department of Defense system developed in the 90s, which was also part, it's basically just a repackaging of the old Loran system. But to your point, we've got a ton of pilots on our side. Because once the pilots all of a sudden started seeing it, they, they couldn't unsee it. I'll, I'll tell you one really quick. When I was flying back from London, I bounced, I was flying on Iceland Air and I bounced off Island, uh, Iceland and came back to uh, Seattle. And when I was uh, at baggage, one of the pilots walked up to me. He goes, hey, can I get a selfie? Right. And we took some shots. And he goes, yeah, I love your work. He goes, he goes, I got to get back to the crew. Yeah, I go. He, and he looks at me, winks. It's like, yeah, we didn't talk. And he goes back. It's like, yeah. He's, <laughs> he, because pilots can't talk. Pilots can't talk. I don't want to be seen speaking to you. Absolutely. I mean, a pilot, you might as well tell, if you're a pilot, you might as well tell people you've been chased by a UFO for the last two hours. In fact, it'd be easier than telling okay, what about well, what about the other planets? What, what about Mars and Venus and Saturn and all those other planets? We can see through telescopes. 
we see there spherical. Right. Are you telling me that something unique about the Earth? That you're it's not? you're just and looking. The Galileo is wrong. The the stars <laughs> and the planets and everything are just lights in the sky. Just giant ornamental clock system that predates language. When you go into a planetarium, you look about. And I've done this with people. I was like, Hey, take a pair of binoculars. Look at Jupiter up there. It's like, Wow, it looks pretty spherical, right? It's like, Yeah. I go, Can you land on it? I was like, No. It's like, Why not? Well, because it's just a light on the ceiling. Who's to say when you didn't walk out of the planetarium, you're just not in a much, much bigger one? You're in a sound stage, man. Uh, we've sent a rover. We we sent a rover to Mars. Who said? Who said we sent a rover to Mars? The Americans? <laughs> Come on, we we lie. We <laughs> lie about everything. The Americans, the Americans look, and I love being American. <laughs> but like your one of your callers said yesterday, and I've been listening to the show pretty much all week. He goes. He goes. We're showbiz, and it's true. We're absolutely the greatest show on earth. We, it's like if we. If, if we could create a lie to make us, to prop us up, to make us look better, we're going to do it as a country. And so, yeah, the Americans tell, mm. say we went to Mars. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure they did. Yeah, a battery that never dies, remote, we, remote control yeah, rovers. This wonderful new telescope. Look at this, the, the pictures that are coming back from this wonderful, the John, whatever you call it, telescope. Right. Uh, this wonderful new telescope that we have because the, the, the old Hubble one isn't good enough anymore. Right. And, and those pictures are coming back. And, you know, it, it, okay, they're not three-dimensional pictures. I get that. They're two-dimensional. <laughs> but, but we don't have to be geniuses to figure out, you know, the 3D aspect of a photograph. Well, I mean, when you look at something that's spherical on a 2D picture, you know it's 3D by the shadows. You know it's 3D by its shape. You know it's 3D by design. And we've, you know what I mean? Uh, we've, torn, we've torn apart uh, pretty much everything uh, NASA's ever done. Uh, and don't forget, I mean, th take the movie. You're a movie guy. Uh, take the movie Gravity. Right with Sandra Bullock, that that footage is absolutely outstanding. Yeah. You could intersplice that with NASA footage all day long. In fact, it's better looking than NASA footage. But for, don't even forget about Gravity, which it is it fairly is recent. Fairness, Go yeah. back to uh, Stanley Kubrick's um, Opus, his uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey from 1968. By the way, released just before Apollo in 1969. And that has aged wonderful. You look at the Blu-ray version it, of that; he, it's gorgeous. It's Stanley. It's it's Stanley Kubrick, they said, that was involved in the, the moon landing. Oh, I absolutely the believe he was involved in the moon landing. In fact, I, if you want to look at a wonderful <laughs> documentary, look at the, the documentary called Room 237, where he built in his confession into the Shining movie, which he directed um, in 1980, which was basically that, you know, again, they, it took five years. Again, people don't want to talk about it. It was like he took him five years to finish 2001 A Space Odyssey, and everybody knew that the government paid for it. Defense contractors paid for, for his stuff. They were basically paying him to say, I was like, what can be faked on film? And then by the time they got to the real mission, that's when he backed, okay. that's when he backed out. Sorry, I ramble. By the way, if anyone wants to watch a movie called Capricorn One, I'm sure Mark knows that one. Capricorn One, it, it's a really good movie. Have you seen Capricorn One, Mark? Oh, God, I love that movie. It's the, yeah. By the way, it's the only serious role, yeah. I think, that O.J. was ever in, <laughs> which is weird. That's right. That's, I forgot that O.J. was yeah, in Yeah, O.J. Right. was in it. Yeah. Yeah, Capricorn One is a great movie about the fake moon landing. No, 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 fake, and fake, fake Capricorn Mars landing. landing. Fake Mars landing. And real, real, Mars real landing, quick, Mars the landing. the reason that was produced, it was an independent film, was the the CBS affiliate hated the moon footage so much. He's going, look, he, and he again, they producers know this. It's like I could have made a better moon moon production than that. In fact, I can make a better Mars production than that. And that's all. It's like, hey, why don't we make a movie about it? Fake Mars mission, and that's what they did. It's a brilliant movie. We're all Neil Armstrong, huh? God, well, this is one small step for man, right. one giant leap for mankind. Although, if you actually go to the Kennedy Space Center now, they've changed the quotation. It actually says over the door now, one small step for man, one star, giant leap for humankind. Uh, Can you believe they actually changed uh, the Well, yeah, I can. I'm, I'm just in. To be, just to be woke. I'm, just yeah, I'm woke. in the middle of woke central out here, and it is bad. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, it's been interesting talking to you. I still don't believe you, by the way. That's okay. But it's been interesting talking That's to you right. anyway. Thank and you. And it gives people food for thought, doesn't it? It makes people critically think. Um, thank you very much indeed for joining us. And uh, I'm sure we'll chat again sometime, Mark. I hope so. And by the way, thank you, Jane, for, for bringing me in. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much indeed. There you go, Mark All right. Sargent, who is a self